Check out what we'll be making today. This radial progress bar is built within Rive and it's overlaid as a position fixed element on the web and we're using JavaScript to tie the progress of the bar based on the scroll position. I'll be utilizing this sort of thing for my upcoming portfolio as well. Now, this is a two part video tutorial where today we'll focus on the Rive side of things and get all of that ready. And then in a few days, I'll upload part two where we utilize cursor to write the JavaScript for us based on a series of prompts. This way, you could be a designer and not have to worry about learning JavaScript in order to get something like this up and running. So let's get started. All right, so the first step here usually in these type of projects is to design whatever it is that you're trying to build within Rive. Uh, of course, we could easily build this within Rive, which is what we'll do, uh, but I do like using Figma, you know, because it's a lot faster just to prototype basic ideas and design ideas for kind of like a progress bar like this. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and take this background color. That'll be the first thing that we set within Rive. So I have a new document up here. We're gonna leave um, 500 by 500 for the size. And then with this section right here, we're gonna paste in that color code, which is 05162A. All right, so the first thing we'll recreate here is within Figma, it's gonna be this outer band. Now we could recreate this completely within Rive because it's so simple, it's just a ellipse, but we can also copy as SVG right here. So if I do that and hit paste, nothing shows up, that's because by default it's in the assets area. I'm just gonna take this and rename this from pasted to outer orb or something like that. So now I'm gonna left click and just drag that right in there. Okay, so now we can center this vertically and horizontally. We can also click layout selection, all right? And in doing that, we can then nest things within this uh, element right here. So now what I'll do is take our ellipse or O on your keyboard and then just drag out a size roughly like this and then literally left click, drag it inside of the layout and that'll make it the exact same size. So now we can get rid of the fill and we can give it a stroke, all right? So the stroke color is gonna be based on the color that we've defined within Figma which happens to be this blue color right here. It's like a Facebook blue or something like that. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and paste that right there, which is 0477FF. And by the way, this little gray outline, that's because we're utilizing layouts. We can toggle the outline off by clicking layouts right here. All right, so now I'm also gonna go ahead and select the actual ellipse. And this is gonna be our progress bar. And we're gonna make that a size two, just for the thickness of that stroke. Okay, so the way this works is we're gonna select ellipse, and we'll just call this progress, by the way. And what this, the, the way we'll animate this is we simply click on this little element right here, and then we go ahead and choose trim, and then start. Start value is what we want, because as you can see, if I left click and just drag this, we'll see it goes all the way from a percentage value of zero, to 100. All right, so by default, we'll just put zero right there. Great. Now, let's go ahead and work on getting the type in here. So I'm gonna take the type tool and I'm gonna put just like a random value of 72. And then we're gonna increase the size to roughly what we want it to be. Now, if we move this around, it's gonna put it inside of the layout. I don't really want that. So if I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna use these uh, directional elements right here. So to get it centered vertically, there we go. And then I'm gonna kind of offset it just slightly because we're gonna have a percentage value next to it. So we can duplicate that, Control D, drag this over, double click to change the text to a percentage, select this. And of course, I want this to be a much smaller value for the font size. So something right around there will work. And then we can take both of these while holding Shift. So they're both selected and we can right click wrap in layout. Now you can also adjust where the percentage value shows up over here. I'll just put it over here to the right center. All right, so now that we have that ready to rock, um, there's another thing that we have to add as well. Um, going back here, we have this little blue element here. We could copy that. Um, we could just recreate it real quick here within Rive. So take our ellipse, something like this, and we're gonna position it at the very top. 
and make sure it's centered. And we're also gonna change it to that blue color. Again, I forget what that blue color is, so I'm gonna copy it over here and then paste right there. All right, now in order to get this orb to wrap around and follow that little line that we're gonna animate, uh, what we have to do is hit Y with this orb selected. When you hit Y, you'll see this freeze active thing here. And what it allows you to do is to change the anchor point location. So we can drag it down right to the center and you'll see a little red snapping element right there. Now we can hit done. And then when we rotate it by clicking this little yellow line, you'll see it follows perfectly. This too will be controlled by JavaScript. Okay. So with that, there's one final little thing I want to add just for the fun of it. I'm going to duplicate this ellipse. And we're going to stick this one over here on the outside. We're going to scale it down much smaller. So I'm holding shift and alt, kind of scaling that sucker down. We'll put this one up here in the center as well. And let's get it like right there. Then hit Y. And again, we have to make sure this one as well is in the center. Hit done. And we're also going to change the color to right around 092C57. Okay, so with that one selected, of course, we could do the same thing. Maybe make it go the opposite direction. Okay, so now that we have all that ready, the final thing that we have to do within this section in the design section is whenever you wanna update text from runtime, in this example, we're gonna be using the JavaScript runtime, then we need to export the text value itself. So if we duplicate into this, you'll see we'll have a text run, run one right here, which is associated with this number 72. So what we need to do, I'm gonna rename this first, and I'm gonna call this scroll percentage. And then we're gonna right click and export it. This is what gives access uh, to the runtime to be to allow us to update this externally, this, this value right here. So remember, this is called scroll percentage and it's wrapped in brackets, letting us know that we can then set and get this value externally. All right, so the next step is to switch over to animate and start creating various timelines. So the, the simplest timeline that we'll create, which is super easy, is this little outer orb. This is going to be infinitely looping at a consistent, you know, kind of, I, w I guess you could say timing. Um, and it's not tied to any interactivity. It's just a, an external kind of, you know, non unimportant element that gives us a little bit of a more interest in the design itself. So I'm gonna switch to timeline one. We'll call this basic orb or outer or, ah, I'm hitting the wrong keys. There's something wrong with my control button got stuck. Anyway, <laughs> basic orb. We're going to um, change that again to outer orb animation. All right. And this is super simple. All we have to do is just take it and we will create a keyframe in rotation at the beginning, go to the very end, and then change this to 360, which will automatically add another keyframe. Now, if we go ahead and hit play, it'll play through once. We wanna change that to loop. This will loop indefinitely, but it's way too fast. So to fix that, we'll come over here and change playback speed to like 0.2. Now, if we hit the space bar, we can see a nice kind of animation that just infinitely loops. Very simple right there. And now we're gonna create the animation for that little line, the stroke that will also go around. So to do that, we'll create a new timeline down here and we'll call this line animation start. And then we will put for our line, which happens to be this element right here. It's called progress. We're gonna come out here to the settings of our stroke and then put a keyframe at start. Then we're gonna go ahead and right click and we're going to duplicate that animation or that timeline rather, and we're gonna change this to end. Then we come back here to the settings and change this to 100%. Okay, there's no animation within these elements except 
you could see we have a start and an end animation with the appropriate keyframes. All right, so the way you make this actually animate based on a number input, which by the way, we will create real quickly. So we click input, a number, and for this one, we'll just call this scroll percentage. There we go. What we do is we're gonna take entry. Now this is outer orb animation. Do we want this layer to just control this one alone, this element up here. So I'm gonna create a new layer. And by the way, we can rename our layers. Good idea to make things a little bit easier to understand. So this is outer orb. This one here is going to be for controlling the uh, primary line animation. All right. And the way we do this is we're gonna take line animation start, left click, drag that timeline on, and create a connection here. And with this line animation selected, over here, we can create a blend. So we're gonna blend start and end together. All right, so my stupid control key is all jacked up. Okay, so what we'll do is select that tab choose scroll percentage that is based on the input that we created over here then we click plus on the timeline and we're going to choose start we're going to click plus we're going to choose start again and then change this to end there we go because that way we have a start and then an end and i'm going to put 100 which is in terms of a percentage value right there all right so now if i go ahead and hit play and I left click and drag and change this scroll uh, percentage input, number input, you'll see this goes all the way around. And that's how you do that. And you can actually see in this area, the little indicator letting us know that it's working. Okay, so now we'll stop it. And we're gonna do the same thing for the orb, this main orb right here, this ellipse. So what we'll do, you know the drill, we're gonna get plus on the timeline. We're gonna go ahead and spe specify main orb start. And then we're gonna take, it's the rotation value for this one, put a keyframe, duplicate it, main orb end, and then go ahead and change this to 360. There you go. Now we're gonna create another layer, uh, main orb start create a connection, select it, scroll percentage, main orb end, main orb start. 100% at the end value. Alrighty. And now let's change layer three to main orb anim. And let's go ahead and hit play. And let's see if we adjust this. Ah, there it goes. Exciting stuff. And that's it. That's all the work that we need to do here within Rive for this you know, pretty simple animation with the with exception to one more thing. I, for this type of thing, like where there's an overlay, like, and there's gonna be stuff behind it potentially, you wanna take the artboard and just hide the fill, the background. So that way you can have things behind it if you need to within the web. Okay, so now with this all ready to rock, we can just hit export and it will create a RIV file, a .riv. Now this is the point in which we can go ahead and switch gears to cursor. All right, so that's it for part one. In part two, we'll get this implemented on the web with the help of cursor. Now I'll be uploading this in two to three days from now and check the YouTube description here for the link just in case that time has already elapsed and you can just watch it now. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you all soon.